I use Blender 4.3's new volume scattering methods and its updated principled BSDF tools to create this artwork that you see here. So here's the scene. It's pretty basic. It's just some landscape, the house itself, and the particle system, which is driving all of the foliage that you see. I'm using the brand new volume scatter MI option, M-I-E. This will handle things like condensation and fog in the air far more accurately than any of the previous volume scattering methods that came with Blender originally. The new volume scattering methods allow you to control the density in a far more realistic manner. You're also able to change the diameter of the water droplets, which affects how the light propagates through the volume. So if we lower this, you can see it's a much more diffuse lighting system. If we just zoom in over here, let's see, hold on. Actually, if we go from a greater distance and then punch in right there, you can see that this is a very diffuse light. But if we bump up this diameter, you see that it becomes a little bit more harsh. And this is a super nice effect, and it's also super performant. So we do have this much larger scene here, but we're still able to get a fantastic result. Here's another example. Just by controlling the diameter, we can completely change how our final render looks. You're also able to dynamically adjust the density like usual, but it gives you a much cleaner result and it looks absolutely incredible. So for this scene, I took it out of the pale heart, the seclusion zone from Destiny 2. We have tools in place that you can just hit export and grab the full environment. Then you can take it into Blender and shade accordingly. Focusing on Zavala's house, there's a few really cool things that I was able to use on this project. First off is the Principal BSDF's new Diffuse slider for roughness. This new Diffuse Roughness tab is different than the base roughness up here. This changes it from a Lambertian model to Orin Nair. And what this does is it, it adjusts how the lighting is handled and the glancing angle uh, intensity so it's super super sweet and if you have anything that's supposed to be super rough say rocks uh, clothing you really want to have this roughness set all the way up to one i was able to use it here on this thatch piece and these are all in-game models uh, and assets and these are all the same textures but again this is just custom bsdf handling and kind of manipulating the textures in a very particular way on the thatch piece itself i actually have a little bit of a fancy layer system. So we have the top up here, then I'm using the geometry back facing and feeding that through to the transmissive properties. So that way, if we ever come in under here, we can actually have light passing through and making it look more accurate to the real world. Same thing with the wooden textures here. Since this is wood, it's supposed to be rough. So I've slapped the diffuse roughness all the way up and you can see the difference that it makes there. As for the windows, they came with these base textures, just the diffuse, and then inside of that diffuse alpha channel that was pre-baked came the roughness channel, then it came with a normal map, so I plugged all of those in, and it gave me this result, and it looks really, really good inside of Blender 4.3. Now, I did go in and dynamically light this, so I placed lights where I thought that they should go that might add to the scene a little bit. This particular model had the interior of the house completely closed off. So what I did was I just cut a hole inside of the mesh using edit mode and then stuck a few lights in there. So from camera view, it makes it look like, you know, there's a light on inside. Another fun thing that I did for this project was I exported this base mesh and brought it into Embergen as a reference and just really quickly generated this VDB that is animated and looping over 220 frames. So if I do an animation, then we have the ability to have all of that handled already. As for my rendering settings, uh, I'm rocking 1024. I don't denoise inside of the Blender just because it, it kind of sucks and it gives you these blotchy errors all over the place. Um, then down here, my view transform is set to AGX with the punchy look just preferred it for this one and then my light paths I have it set to 30 30 30 direct and indirect I have it set to 100 I don't use the light tree because it kind of messes with renders sometimes and then for my noise pattern I'm just using classic because having blue noise just kind of makes it a huge pain in the ass to denoise and post I'm rendering out at 4k 100% 23 fps 2398 24 whatever um, I am rendering out an EXR file and what that allows me to do is have a full 32-bit 
information so that way in post I can expose down, up, have full latitudinal control, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, the environment tab is pretty simple. I just have an overcast sky image that I downloaded from HDRI Haven. Uh, the one thing with Blender is that the Nishida sky texture is far more intense than if you were to just slap an HDRI with a strength of one into the background node. So I just brought the strength up a little bit and that gave us a super nice blue look. Pretty nice. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. This is the scene. It's extremely basic. Uh, this is just a giant landscape mesh from in-game. Uh, I joined all of the separate pieces together so that way when I'm doing the particle system work, I can very quickly and easily just paint over the entire mesh instead of having to go outside of an object, paint another one, paint another one, etc., etc. I actually have three vertex groups on this. So the first one is for the grasses. Uh, and these are just Quixel Megascans assets that are set up inside of collections. And you can see these way up here. These are also set up a little bit differently inside of here. So I have a custom color ramp to adjust the alpha. And then I have an invert roughness just to make it actually work because by default they look weird. At the same time, I also have a few rocks that are in here. So there's a much larger boulder and then a few scattered smaller ones that are low poly and low texture, so that way I can save up on VRAM as I go along the way. These particle systems are kind of basic, but they work pretty well. Um, all I'm doing is, again, using those vertex groups that I painted out earlier. I have the number set kind of high. The version of Blender that I'm using is slightly different from the release version. This is still the beta, and it doesn't work with child particles or interpolated child particles, so it says simple, but it doesn't actually do anything. Kind of infuriating, but it's fine. So I have these set to their independent uh, vertex groups, so that way each one works properly. And you'll see that it kind of glitches out, and uh, again, this version is broken, so I can't set the particles to hair types. I can only set them to an emitter, and I have them all emitting at frame one, and then they last for as long as the scene goes on. So. I've also turned off in the physics tab, just hit none instead of any of the other options because they would start moving in the air for no reason. As for my lighting, it's pretty simple. I just have these two giant spotlights here casting and acting as the kind of sun shining through some clouds maybe. Um, and then I have a few area lights on top of the house that are set as a blue backfill. So this will just kind of help bring them up a little bit more. I have one that's in front that's a little bit more saturated to give it a little bit more contrast when we're viewing from the camera on this piece right here. For my camera, I have a, uh, I think it's a 45 or 47. Yeah, 47 millimeter on a full frame. And then I have an invisible box here. And this is just a really crappy modeled, like, flat plane that I took. I just extruded some edges, um, and I'm using this as a light blocker to create some artificial contrast within our forefront here. So that way, when we look through the camera mode, we can see that this area is dark, and all of our focus is being brought in to the house itself. I've disabled the fog uh, while we're working, but let me show you the difference with it on and then off. On, off. It's absolutely insane. It's a fantastic new way of working with the volume scatter, and it gives you a much more gritty appearance to your projects. You can also bump this up if you want for a little bit more haze. Um, and I am going to be doing like alternate versions of this. So if you want to follow for more, uh, I've got Blue Sky now and my Twitter, obviously, although I'm probably going to avoid using that because it's a terrible hellhole of a place and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy so but moving on um, a few of these other materials I went through and customized so these boulders right here um, they just had a few base textures that came with them but I managed to snag the textures off of the tree and use the normal map and I selected out the Z channel so what that does is it gives us the facing up angle for the object and I'm using a color ramp to kind of clamp down on that value and I'm multiplying it a few times and that way I'm adding in some of these uh, like mossier textures just to give a little bit more visual contrast. 
One thing when you're working on these large environment pieces is trying to ensure that you're able to tell a story with some of the background details. So one thing that I did on purpose was remove plants and rocks in the path of wherever the characters would be taking most often. So I've cleared a space through here and then past this part, the camera can't really see because there's a little hill, but you can clear entire areas so that way it kind of helps sell the feeling of the characters are moving through this, this environment has been lived in, and it just adds a little bit more detail to your otherwise CG shot. After you've done all that, you'll get a result that kind of looks like this, and from there you can render it out, send it over into your compositor of choice. Um, for this one, I kind of wanted to stick with DaVinci. Um, it's been really fun to learn all of the color correction tools and trying to understand its fusion as well. I am a Nuke user, primarily, but it was kind of fun to just try this out inside of DaVinci. After you've rendered out the EXR and tossed it into DaVinci, you'll notice that it kind of looks weird entirely. Uh, that's because Blender EXR exports at a linear Rec. 709, so all you have to do is convert that linear Rec. 709 into whatever color space that you want, and then convert it back out into uh, either Rec. 709A, sRGB, DCI-P3, anything that you're wanting, uh, just make sure that you know, you know where, where you're going to be exporting to. In my instance, I'm exporting Rec. 709 because this is going on to the internet with a gamma of 2.2. Um, I have a few things in here. So this first note here is exposure control. So this controls, uh, since I've placed it before any of my CSTs, my color space transform nodes, this op operates in a linear function. So I'm able to accurately adjust my exposure values and bring them up and bring them down in a more mathematically correct way. After my exposure node, I'm using the LUT pack from Gleb Alexandrov's DaVinci Freemium course. Uh, if y'all haven't taken that or downloaded it, it's free and there's a ton of great information and a lot of helpful pointers that y'all should definitely be interested in. So go take a look. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description for that as well. But I'm using the linear Rec. 709 to RE Wide Gamut 4. And from here, I'm using the my noise reduction um, just because, again, I don't denoise inside of Blender because it sucks. And if we take a look at the difference, it might be kind of hard to see, but there is a noticeable difference. And it looks better than uh, if you use open image denoise or optics. It looks so much better. From here, I have an HDR control. So this just allows you to have really fine tunings for uh, which values you specifically want to start messing around with. So in my exposure value, I brought it up a little bit, and I also brought up my saturation. In my light, I brought it a little bit cooler because I knew that this was going to be the, the top of the volume scatter here. And that was pretty much it for that node. But down here, I actually have three parallel nodes, and these are all power window setups. So this first one here is set up as uh, just a little mask around, let's see, hold on, get out of that, uh, mask around the door so I could artificially bring up the brightness. And then I'm using the HDR wheels again, and I'm bringing up the saturation and the exposure. So what that'll do is if I get out of here, you can see that the color is now adjusted. Now it looks weird right now. It does look a little weird right now, but there's a reason. Uh, another power window down here just to bring up a little bit more golden glow in the grass area. And then I have another one right here, but this one is just isolating the rock in the foreground. And I'm using a little radial blur just to kind of uh, help focus your eye as a viewer into where we need to be looking. So then after that, I have my RE Log C4 back to AGX Punchy. So this then converts it into sRGB. And now all of a sudden, that door that looks super weird makes a little bit more sense and it feels more homey. It is super blue though. My favorite thing to do at the end of each project is to throw on a little bit of lens distortion and you'll get these little bars and little black spots on the outside. Uh, an easy way to fix that is by adding an adjustment layer over top where it just kind of scales it in a little bit. There are two nodes on top of this, but they don't really affect that much, to be honest. 
So we don't need to worry about those. Hopping back in, the final node that I use is the Dehancer Pro plugin, and it just, it looks fantastic. It completely changes the vibe of whatever image that you want, and you can change between a ton of different film stock profiles that they already have set up. So if I just click and start scrolling through this, you can see that the image is starting to change pretty dramatically uh, just by clicking and scrolling through these. So if I wanted to go for a completely different look and feel, I could just by hitting the scroll wheel. And some of these actually look really damn good. All right, I'm getting I'm getting a little distracted here. But yeah, you can very quickly and easily get a very different look. And um, if there's a film that you want to replicate the look of, you can actually look up what kind of film stock that they shot it on or that they were at least trying to replicate. Most of the time it's available online for free. And you can just download and try to replicate it if they don't have the profile in here. Uh, DaVinci also comes with a free version uh, that's similar to this, but um, it's, not, it's not as good in my opinion. Uh, other final things, I just added film grain, 65 millimeter, and then a halation, and then some bloom. And what these will do is on areas of highlight, um, film grain obviously goes uniform. Uh, halation will just add a nice halation effect to uh, the outsides, uh, mimicking a way a film sensor would have captured it on the day. Same thing with bloom. This one's a lot more subtle. And it just brings up our values a little bit, making it a little bit nicer, a little less contrasty, in my opinion. And that's pretty much it. It was a pretty simple scene. Um, it did take me a while to make the whole scene, just because I was starting from scratch. So I had to go in and texture every single little piece and make sure that it looked good. And it was really, really fun to use some of the Blender 4.3's uh, new tools, uh, specifically the volume scattering, which is absolutely fantastic, and then the brand new principal BSDF or a Nair slider. Definitely go give those a try, the blender.org, go ahead and grab it. Um, it'll be free forever, and it's absolutely incredible. I have a bunch of other projects that I'm going to be using Blender 4.3 on in the future, specifically taking advantage of these new volume scatter tools. So be sure to stick around, follow, subscribe, share, do whatever, and uh, catch you all on the next one. Peace.